Hey guys, it's Nikki from AMD. I'm just gonna go over how to implement your lasers into your office. At this point, your lasers should be set up. If not, please call our customer care reps and have them help you or watch our YouTube videos um, that help you set up your laser. So first things first, I have these are both of our Picasso lasers. I have the Picasso Plus and the Picasso Lite. This demo will go over how to implement both of the lasers. The first thing that I wanna talk about is tips. Um, in your box, you probably got an assortment of colors of tips. Um, there's probably some purple and some orange. The orange um, are a 400 micron, and they come in a 5 and a 10 millimeter. The purple is a 300 micron that also comes in a 5 and a 10 millimeter. It is up to you and your practice on what tip you want to use. So whatever works for you works for us. Um, and then that's the tip that you would reorder. The second thing I want to talk about really quick is just a few troubleshooting things. This is your foot pedal. Your foot actually needs to go inside of this foot pedal. And then there should be a green flashing light. That green light tells you that it is connected to your laser. If you see any other colors besides green, maybe a red or a yellow, that is the indicator that you need to change your battery. To do that, simply all you do is just unscrew these four things on the bottom, the four screws, and it's a nine volt bot and sorry, a nine volt battery. And then it should be ready and connected to go. I'm gonna go over some settings for you guys really quick. So this, we're gonna go over the Picasso Plus. If you guys can see from this, the Picasso Plus and the Picasso Light have four of the exact same um, icons. So this upper right hand one, this is your scalpel setting. This setting is gonna be a doctor setting. I will go over in just a little bit what we're gonna do with all those. The second setting um, that the doctors are gonna use um, is this uh, happy face mode, and this is your continuous, or sorry, this is your pulse mode. So this is your hap this is your continuous mode, the scalpel mode, and then the happy face mode is your pulse mode. The bottom right one is this purple setting. This is where you're gonna be doing all your hygiene procedures. So I'm gonna click on this really quick. There are two different, um, two different procedures that are in this setting. So if you guys can see from here, if this upper left hand corner, there's a five second timer. If you click on that, that's going to switch your settings. And in just a second, I'm going to go over how to and what you're going to use those for. To get out of each of your settings, you're just going to push this back button. This green little squiggly mode right here, this is your photobiomodulation mode. This is where you're going to be doing all of your lesions. Now you can see that those are the exact same on the Picasso Plus. However, the Picasso Plus has two more. Um, this lower right one is for whitening. It kind of looks like um, an eyeball, an eyelash. And then this, per or sorry, <laughs> this yellow one is for your favorites mode. So those are the biggest differences in just icons. Quickly, we're gonna go over some hygiene stuff. I'm gonna teach you how to do laser bacterial reduction and I'm gonna teach you how to do laser assisted perio. LAPT, some people like to call it. Um, laser bacterial reduction, you're going to do it in this purple setting right here. And it's going to be in this one with the five second timer. If you forget which timer to use, just look at this elementary school drawing on the upper right hand side. It looks like it's sub or super gingival. And then if you switch it, it looks like it's sub gingival. So that's going to be where you're going to do your lat. So back to laser bacterial reduction. Laser bacterial reduction is an awesome procedure to use, and it is just simply to kill bacteria. Um, it can be done on healthy patients, it can be done on gingivitis, and it can be done on perio patients. It can be done before an SRP, all kinds of us. Think of it as a pre-procedural rinse. Um, really beneficial. It takes the bacteria count down from billions to hundreds. Um, and it is very, very simple to do. There is no pain involved, and all that you are doing is using laser energy, so you're not actually removing any tissue or anything like that. All that you're gonna do is take your tip of choice, and you're just gonna place it in the sulcus, um, up in the sulcus, and you're gonna walk it around the tooth. The best rule of thumb, this has a five second timer, is a, is a five second sweep from the distal to the mesial. And um, when you do that, um, I just follow the same way that I probe, and then it's five seconds distal means you're on a buckle sweep, if that makes sense. So in total, the whole procedure should take you less than five minutes. You never need to go into any pockets. 
you only need to stay into that sulcus and work your way around the mouth, following the same way that you probe. It's very simple, very easy. You can practice on each other before you practice in patient's mouths. The next thing that you need to do, or the next procedure that hygienists can do, is laser assisted perio. Now you need to check on your state regulations to see what your state allows you to do. Some hygienists can initiate the tip, basically making it a hot tip able to cut tissue, and some hygienists cannot. Um, laser assisted perio is a post, let me go back here. So we're gonna switch this to the 30 second timer to do this one. You can see that this changes to an elementary school drawing that's sub gingival now. If you can initiate the tip, please initiate, initiate the tip at this time. The best way to do it is to do it in this green squiggly setting. Why? Because that's already set to a 0 0.5 watt. Um, I don't have any articulation paper with me right now, so we're just gonna imagine. But what you're gonna do, we're gonna pretend my hands here, articulation paper, is you're just gonna drag it while firing the laser. You're just, to initiate the tip, you're gonna drag it at, at a 45 degree angle for about the length of the initiation paper. Turn it back and drag it the other 45 degree angle. Turn it and drag it at a 90 degree angle. If you wanted to check your initiation to make it was there, all you would simply do is keep it in the standby mode. The ready mode's gonna give you this aiming beam the aiming beam isn't actually harmful to your eyes. It's just a laser pointer, and that's not gonna make it so you can hurt your eyes or anything like that. So now, if your state allows it, our tip is initiated. So what we're going to do is we are gonna do post SRP. So we've done the whole SRP. And the patient's numb, everything's feeling good. Now we're gonna go in there and we're gonna remove all of that dead necrotic tissue. At this point, you need to be able to assess tissue. It's very easy to assess tissue. All you're going to do is say, start at the distal of two. You're gonna go into that pocket, say it's a six millimeter pocket. You're gonna to go to that base of the pocket, we're not firing a laser yet, and you're gonna make sure that you aim it towards the tissue side. We've already cleaned the two side, now we're gonna work on that tissue side. All you're gonna do is just do a little sweeping motion back and forth to work your way out of that pocket. Now, keep in mind, we are not going all the way around the tooth. We're working in one specific pocket. So a good rule of thumb is about a second per millimeter. So if we're in a six millimeter pocket, you're gonna be working your way out of the pocket for six seconds. So now we've done that. We started at the base of the pocket, walked our way out. What you're going to do um, is you're gonna check it. Always start on that 0 0.5. Let me go back to this purple setting. I'm gonna switch it. Start on that 0 0.5, it's in a continuous watts. You're gonna work your way out. You're gonna visually inspect the tip. What we want to see is some of that necrotic tissue at the end of the tip. If you see nothing and your tip comes out clean, all you're simply gonna do is turn the laser up by 0.1, reinsert it into that bottom of the base of that pocket, walk your way out. Do that same thing and move it up until you see that necrotic, tip, that necrotic tissue. Typically, it's around a 0.7, maybe a 0.6 even, that you'll start seeing this necrotic tissue. Once you find that, you have your correct wattage. What that means is you don't have to sit and mess with the laser anymore. You can simply just keep moving on with your procedure. Every time that you have necrotic tissue at the end of your tip, make sure that you are wiping it with a wet two by two. Don't use any alcohol, it's just water. We don't wanna blow up any lasers, we just wanna use them correctly, right? Um, so once you have the correct wattage, work your way out now. We have our right wattage and we're gonna go to that base of pocket, work our way out, remove that necrotic tissue, and we're gonna continue doing that, putting it in the base of the pocket, wiping it out until we see one of two things. The first thing is your tip comes out clean. The second thing is, is that you see fresh blood. Now remember, fresh blood is bright red flowing blood. The, um, the, the blood that we don't want is the disease blood, it's like coagulated and dark and red. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, so just either one of those things will happen and you don't need to see both just one or the other You might see fresh blood and you might see um, your tip come out clean. So that's what you're gonna check for Then after that you're just once your tip once it comes out clean You're gonna move to the next pocket and this is pocket pocket specific, right? So we're gonna if we did the distal two now we're gonna move to the buckle of two um, just remember we're not sweeping why we're not sweeping is because this might be a six This might be a four and this might be a seven. It would be really hard to sweep across there. Plus, you wanna make sure that you're removing the exact amount of necrotic tissue that each pocket needs. 
Afterwards, post-op care, very simple. Um, don't use any, have your patient, they can brush and they can floss and they can do all that, but no big seeds and a water pick, right? We want those fibers to heal. They're very delicate at this stage. So I would say for about six weeks is probably good for the no um, water pick. But the, um, but for the um, brushing and flossing, they can brush right away. We always wanna keep up with that bacteria count. Um, that is how you do laser assisted perio. Now, if you cannot initiate the tip as a hygienist, you can still do this procedure. Do it with an uninitiated tip at a 0.8. You might, as you go along, see some necrotic tissue build up on the end of your tip. You're not gonna be turning the wattage up and down to find the, to find the correct wattage. Just start at a 0.8 and work your way out. Do each sweep uh, about four times until you until you see that fresh blood kind of go off of what you're seeing and how each pocket is. Every pocket is very different. The next thing I'm gonna go over with you guys is lesions. Lesions are super awesome. You can do herpetic lesions and you can also do um, like aphthous ulcers as well. So they're very simple. It's gonna be done in this green squiggly mode and the Picasso light also has that green squiggly mode. What this is, is it's just a continuous mode, but it also has a 30 second timer. That 30 second timer is gonna come in handy for us. So what we're going to do, lesions are best treated within the first 24 to 48 hours. So if your patient calls you and they have that tingling sensation, try to get in there, try to have them get in there as fast as they can. Um, what you're doing when you do lesions is you're speeding up the healing process and you're actually killing that virus if it's a herpetic lesion. Um, so it never comes back in that same area ever again. So we're taking the patient out of pain, that's important. We're speeding up their healing process, that's important. And we're killing the virus so it never comes back in that spot. Super awesome procedure to do. Do some marketing so your patients know about this so they utilize it. What you're going to do is go to that green squiggly mode. Now we have to do something called titrating. So we want the patient to feel one of three things. We want them to feel um, some warmth or some tingling or they can feel where you're at. Those are all good signs that you have your correct wattage. Now, if they feel pain, obviously we have the laser too high. Always start at your lowest setting possible. So we're gonna start at a 0 0.5. Oh, I went the wrong way, sorry. Always start at a 0 0.5 when you do this. What you're going to do is you're gonna take your laser, say that this is my lesion right here. You're gonna start about 10 millimeters away fire the laser and circle in. I think it's important to note that I am using an uninitiated tip. Use the, or start about 10 millimeters away and circle in as you're firing until you get about a one millimeter away. This is a non-contact procedure. We don't actually want to, um, we don't actually want to scrape the, um, the lesion or irritate it anymore. So about a millimeter away. Then what you're gonna do in about 10 seconds, you're gonna ask the patient, hey, can you feel anything? Now remember, we're looking for tingling or warmth or they know where you're at. Those are all good things. Um, if they say no, they don't feel anything, all you're simply gonna do is turn it up by 0.1. We never wanna make big jumps. Everything is by 0.1. Repeat, start 10 millimeters away, circle in, circle in. Give it about 10 seconds, can you feel anything? At this point, the patient might say, yeah, I feel some warmth or I feel some tingling or anything like that. Any type of simulation is what we're looking for. So say for instance, it was a 0.6. Awesome, that's my right wattage. Now we're ready to rock and roll. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna start the sequence of 30 seconds on, which is what this timer has, and 15 seconds off. So for 30 seconds, you're gonna stimulate that lesion completely. So you're gonna go around and around and around, if you guys can even see, we're gonna pretend. We're gonna pretend this freckle, if you can even see this lesion. You're gonna go around that lesion, color it in, figure eights. It doesn't matter. All we're doing is stimulating the lesion. The laser is going to count down for you for 30 seconds. At the end of the 30 seconds, um, let it heal. Or sorry, don't let it heal. <laughs> let it cool down um, for about 15 seconds. Then you're going to repeat 30 seconds on, 15 seconds off. How you know when you're done is the patient's going to feel numb. So each time, if you can palpate it, stimulate it with the Q-tip or the patient's tongue or whatever, whatever that sensation is, use it over and over, and they'll be able to tell you um, how numb they are or are not. So hopefully if it starts at a 10, every cycle it'll go down a little bit more. Now, you don't wanna go over five minutes in total stimulation, so please make sure that you are paying attention. You can actually do more harm if you do overstimulate it. So 30 seconds and don't go over, out of those total 30 seconds, don't go over five minutes at a time. So just be aware of that. Um, and that is how you do lesions. The next thing, that's all hygiene stuff, which is super awesome. 
The next thing we're going to go over is doctor's side stuff. Um, you should have a procedure list, and if you do not, please reach out to your customer care. The procedure list has 30 procedures on it, and the 30 procedures, um, and the 30 procedures will walk you through how to do each and every procedure that you might need to do. The first thing that the doctors need to do is initiate the tip. We went over that a little bit earlier on how to initiate the tip. So now we have a hot tip. We are going to, now I'm gonna teach you guys how to assess tissue. So we have the hot tip, we've initiated it. Now we're actually gonna be able to cut tissue. Tissue was first seen at a wattage of 1.2 in a continuous mode. Just a reminder, this continuous mode is this upper right hand side, it's that scalpel mode. So um, 1.2 is seen for thinner tissue. I'm talking crown troughing and phrenectomies, very, very thin tissue. Um, thicker tissue is seen at a 1.4 watt. That's more like your percolectomies, your gingivectomies, all of that stuff for you with multiple layers. Um, you can always follow your procedure list that is given to you. That's a super awesome way, but every patient's tissue reacts differently to the laser. The laser is attracted to dark and wet things. So if you have a patient with more pigmentation in their gum tissue, it's going to react differently and cut way faster than if you were going to have a patient that had really light gingiva pigmentation. So keep that in mind. Yes, you can always go off of that procedure list, but right now I'm going to teach you how to assess tissue. So 1.2 is a great water to start out for that, um, for that thinner tissue, 1.4 for that thicker tissue. What you are going to do and get in this continuous mode is you're going to start at that 1.2. It's already preset to a 1.8 when you get it. In this lower left hand corner, it kind of looks like a floppy disk. If you save it, every time that you get into that um, wattage, what you're going to do is um, or every time that you, sorry, pull up that icon, it's going to start at that wattage. So find your sweet spot, what you want to start with and save it. Then you don't always have to turn it down. Now we have an initiated tip and we're ready to rock and roll. We have it at a 1.2 watt. All that you're going to do is start cutting and you're going to just assess how the tissue is reacting to the laser. You're going to notice one of three things when you cut. You are going to notice what's called dragging and dragging is, um, Multiple things can be considered dragging. Dragging could be like um, it's leaving skin tags behind, it's not cauterizing very well, it's cutting. You as the doctor are having to put more effort behind it, you feel like it's not cutting very well. That's all considered dragging. What that means is you need to turn the laser up. And when you turn it up, remember just by a point one. So we'd start at 1.2, we're just gonna turn to 1.3 and reassess. The second thing that you're gonna notice is what we are looking for. It's a hot knife through butter feel. When you use the laser, your technique is very important. Your technique should be layer by layer, paint like strokes, very effortless. Let the laser do the cutting for you, right? We're not trying to put in a lot of effort. The laser is going to cauterize as it cuts. So it should be very effortless as you go around. If you notice that hot knife through butter feel, very effortless, your technique is really awesome. You're doing those paint like strokes layer by layer. That's your correct wattage. You don't have to keep moving it up and down. Um, the other thing that you might notice is what's called charring. Basically, it's just burning the tissue, right? We don't want that. There's a difference between charring and burning. Burning is more like it's just melting that tissue away. It's just melting it too fast. It's not really cauterizing. That's how you know that it's too hot and you need to turn the laser down. Now, this is all in the continuous mode. I would say about 90% of your procedures are gonna be done in that continuous mode. The pulse mode, is used, which is this upper left hand one. The pulse mode is used um, when you're having trouble with tissue. So say for instance, you're having trouble finding the correct wattage. The pulse mode allows you to go higher in wattage um, without getting those adverse reactions. So little scenario, if we're doing a gingivectomy, we start at that 1.4, we move the laser up to 1.5 because we know it's dragging. Gosh, we still dragging, we're gonna move it up to 0.6. And we continue that process of moving up and then all of a sudden, it went from dragging to charring. So we never really got that sweet spot. We never really got that hot knife through butter feel that we were looking for. That is when I would recommend for you as a doctor to switch to the pulse mode. The pulse mode like it is, it pulses on, pulses off, just like a heartbeat. It allows you to go higher in waters, like I said, without those adverse reactions. So say, for instance, you were in that continuous mode um, and you ended at a point two. Um, and you had those adverse reactions, it kind of went from that dragging to that charring. You could start at a, or sorry, not a point two, a 2.0, sorry. You could start at a 2.0 
and in the pulse mode and you would not get those adverse reactions. Um, if you can assess tissue, you can cut anything. Um, we have tons of videos on our um, website. Feel free to go check them out if you wanna see a specific procedure. Make sure that you are wearing your glasses. Everybody in the operatory needs to be wearing glasses. That is your assistant, your, your, assistant, um, your patient, and the doctor as well. If you are wearing loops, these ones fit really well underneath loops. These are our sport glasses. They, feel, they fit super awesome underneath the loops. Um, if they bug you, there are different, um, there are different loop inserts, so I would contact your loop rep and ask them what they recommend. This is an 810 watts, or eight, yeah, 810 laser. So if they're asking like what it can go to, um, that's what it is. 810 wavelength, sorry, I said watts, wavelength. Um, and they can get you the correct, the correct laser glasses for um, your loops. Um, the last thing I wanna talk about now, so if you're a Picasso Light loser, user, we're, we're all done um, at this point. You would just ask any questions that you had to your customer rep, and you can reach out to me if you have any other questions going forward. So Picasso Light, we're all done. Now the Picasso Plus, the last procedure that we have is the whitening procedure. You should have got a whitening tip. It kind of looks like a Y, it's blue. All that you're gonna do is put it on the end of this tip and just slide it on right there. What it's gonna do is it's going to spread out the laser energy. Use whatever in office you guys like. That's what I always say. Use whatever in office that works well for you guys. What you're going to do is you're going to follow the manufacturers, what they say to do, how they how to use the bleach. Now, if you guys have a zoo or a whitening system that has a light already given to you, so say for instance, it is a like zoom comes with its own light it's not compatible with laser but if you don't have a if you have a whitening system that didn't come with any light chances are it is very compatible with the laser what the laser whitening does is it helps speed up the the whitening process so it helps those cells work together a little bit quicker and it helps penetrate into those darker areas um, that they might see so it does help dehydrate the tooth a little bit so what you're going to do uh, again back to the procedure how we're going to do it is you're going to follow the manufacturers what they say to do so if they say to place the dam and then put the white or the bleach on there and leave it on for 10 minutes that's what you're going to do the only thing that you're going to do differently is take the take the tip the quadra tip and you're just gonna place it per quadrant. Now, if the patient has a really big smile, it might only fix over, fix, it might only fit over the sextants. So just see what you can do um, and put it up right against the bleach. You don't wanna actually touch the bleach because we don't wanna smear it, get it on any soft tissue. Put it right above the bleach. It's gonna count down from 30, move it to your next spot if you're doing sextants or quadrants. If the manufacturer says in 10 minutes to suck the bleach off, reapply two times, three times, whatever it says, you're gonna follow that suction the bleach off, reapply the bleach, and reapply the laser. So every single time that you apply reapply bleach, you are also gonna reapply the laser. That is it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, please reach out with any questions. Your customer care reps know how to answer questions. Um, and then please request any PowerPoints that has all of this information and some more in detail that goes over some coding and stuff like that. Um, in it as well. So thank you guys for joining me and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.